Hello, this is Jenny Dale, your Classical Studies Librarian, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about using the library catalog to find books and book chapter sources. So I'm going to head straight over to our library website, which is library.uncg.edu, although you can also Google UNCG Library, and you'll get to the same place here. We're going to be focusing on the red box that you will see kind of front and center on the library homepage. And we are particularly going to be moving from this default setting, which is the All tab, which brings back, as you can see here, articles and books and databases um, and all kinds of other materials, some of which we don't have access to. So when I know that I'm looking for a book or a book chapter and I want it to be something I can access, as a member of the UNCG community, then I'm going to click that catalog tab. And I'm going to start with kind of a general search here. And that search is going to be for women and ancient Rome. And it's thinking, it's thinking. And one of the things I'll point out over here on the left side of my results page is that this is confirming that it's limited to UNCG University Libraries, so stuff that we have access to. You can do some limit by format here. So if you know that you're looking for an ebook, for example, like you don't have access to the library right now, uh, you do have those options. I am just going to stick with my initial results here, 539, and start browsing through them. So I see this first one it looks like a more sort of general um, book about ancient Rome. Second one, pretty much the same thing. Uh, but when I get to the third one here, I see that this one does seem to focus more on women. So it's called I, Claudia, Women in Ancient Rome. So I see a little bit of a summary here, a little sort of snippet. Um, but if I want to learn more about this book, I am going to go ahead and click on the title. And that takes me to this page, which gives me more detailed information. So I can see the longer summary here. In addition to that, I can see a whole bunch of other information. Over on the right side, I have access options, which are really important. They let me know uh, that this is a print book. It is available in UNCG University Library, specifically in Jackson Library and it is in the stacks. Now this one is an oversized book and that means that when you are in the stacks um, and you find where the in call numbers will be, you'll go to that floor and you'll go all the way over to the left, which is where we keep oversized books on each floor in our tower. You can always ask for help when you're in the library if you're trying to physically access a book. You can ask for help at any of our desks and we will be happy to help you navigate your way around Jackson or the music library. In our uh, section over here on the left that tells us more detailed information about the book, uh, we can see here that it is giving us a table of contents. And I like to point this out because one of the things that you'll often find about academic books, which is many of the books that we're going to have in our library, is that they are often made up of these individual chapters. And you can actually see here that each chapter seems to be written by a different author or authors. And what that means is that you may only need one chapter from this book for it to be a source. So for example, you may only need Gender Theory and Roman Art by Natalie Campen. That may be the only part of this book that you need to use. And that is a perfectly acceptable use of an academic book as a source. The only thing that you really need to keep in mind if you are going to be using one section or chapter of a book like this is you want to make sure that you're citing it appropriately and that's something that I can always help you with if you have questions. But basically your citation needs to indicate I just used this one chapter from this book so that you make sure you're giving credit to this author as well as the folks who edited the whole thing. All right so down below here I want to talk a little bit about this subjects list. So we use the Library of Congress classification system in our libraries. And one of the things that can be very handy about that is that when you start to sort of crack the code, for example, when you go to this section in the stacks, that'll be the oversize in 5763 area, you'll probably find several other books about Roman art physically located around this one. We also use their subject heading system from the Library of Congress. And one of the reasons that this can be helpful is that we can see, okay, these are some of these sort of official things that are associated 
with this. And by official things, I mean official subjects. That was not very clear. Um, so this is kind of how it is being tagged um, by the Library of Congress. And what this means is that, let's say if I want to um, focus on other art exhibitions about women in Rome, I can click on this subject heading. And it takes me, actually, it takes me to libraries worldwide, so I might want to, at this point, go ahead and limit again back to our library. And you'll see that there are a number of other books that have that same sort of subject heading. So this is one way that you can kind of navigate around, try to find different books that are related to your topic. But I'm actually going to go all the way back to my search results, where I originally found this I, Claudia. Um, oh. And it's going to let me right here click back to search results. You can use the back button as well. But so that one was really very focused on art. Um, the in call numbers are actually the fine arts call numbers. So that's really what that one was all about. Um, let's keep looking though. Here's another sort of more general history, uh, politics of Latin literature. Here's one that looks like it could be good. Okay, Women in Ancient Rome, a source book. You'll come across these kinds of sources quite a bit when you're doing research in the field of classical studies. So you might see something that has a uh, subtitle like this, a source book or sources. And often what that means is that we are finding a book that is actually a collection in some way of primary sources. So this could be really handy when you're looking for primary source material. Now I see here that we have this as an ebook, which I'm gonna go through and show you in a moment. But as I scroll through here, again, we have that table of contents letting me know sort of what's in each section. And we have our Library of Congress subject headings. Same thing here. I am going to click on Women, Rome, Social Conditions. And once again, it's taking me to libraries worldwide. And if I just want to limit to UNCG, I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And I can see that there are actually quite a few things that are really more specific to our topic of women in ancient Rome that I can browse through here. So that's just something to keep in mind, but I am gonna go back to my source book. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and click that view ebook option. Now, as I mentioned, when we see something that says it's a source book or, and actually while this is loading, let me pop back over here and show you, one of the subject headings here ends with this sort of uh, addendum sources. That is usually in a Library of Congress subject heading indicator that this is a primary source collection. So that's actually something you could potentially add to your search if you want to use our advanced search functions. But let me go back over here. So all of our eBooks come from different vendors and so the, the interface will look different, but overall they're going to work pretty similarly. So you should be able to navigate to a specific chapter. For example, uh, maybe I want to look at this chapter eight, gender tensions. And I can do a couple of things at this point. One, I can just sort of read straight through as if this was a website. It gives me an indication of when um, it would be if I were looking at this in a print book of when the page changes. So that's helpful for citation. Um, some interesting stuff in this chapter, women charged with poisoning, for example. So maybe that's something I want to focus on. What I see up here in this section is just sort of uh, some contextual information about women being charged with poisoning. Um, and then I have examples from primary sources. So this is from, the, from a primary source, History of Rome, that talks about a specific situation in which a woman was charged with poisoning, for example. Now, I don't always like reading on the screen, so sometimes I like to print things out. Um, and when I do, I usually look for a PDF option. So I clicked that PDF download. Let's take a look at this. This is gonna give you a bit more of the experience of what you would have if you were reading this as a print book. But this it's the same information, right? Here's our section, Women Charged with Poisoning. It's just a slightly different format. So there is a lot available to you using the library catalog. We've got eBooks, we've got print books. You've seen examples of both here. Um, if you ever have questions about what you're finding or not finding in the library catalog, please always feel free to contact me as your classical studies librarian. You can email me directly at jedale2 at uncg.edu 
Or if you've just got a quick question, maybe it's in the evening and you're not getting an email back from me, you can always head back to that library homepage, library.uncg.edu, and click chat with a librarian. And this will give you an option to chat with someone who's in the library and is able to help you. And I'm recording this before the semester begins on Friday the 13th, ominously. Um, so we're gonna be closing at 5 p.m. today, but during this semester, you'll see it starting next week, we usually have someone monitoring this chat service until 11.45 p.m. from Sunday through Thursday. So lots of options to get help. If you just need something quick, I definitely recommend this chat service, but you can also always contact me and I am happy to help you with any of your classical studies research needs.